Coming up on ATV News. A college here at USU has received national recognition. We'll tell you which one and what people are saying about it. Getting a new building on campus isn't cheap. One group went down to Salt Lake to get money to do it. We'll tell you how. Well, we've almost gotten away with it, but it looks like Winter's got his hold on us once again. I'll tell you when he may be letting go. USU just received a national championship in a sport many of us don't even know existed on campus. That and more coming up on ATV Sports. Your ATV News starts right now. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Lauren Brewer. And I'm Randall Henry. With the recent election of the new Pope, you probably have a lot of questions about where he came from. Our Katrina Warburton is live outside to tell us who Pope Francis is and how he will become the leader of the Catholic Church. That's right. Since his recent election on March 13th, there's been a lot of speculation in the news and in the media about what just who he is and what's going on. I was able to speak to a few professors and Catholics to get their opinions on the new pope, as well as what's been broadcast and published about him. Over 1.2 billion Catholics rejoice on March 13, 2013, as Jorge Mario Bergoglio was elected the 266th pope. My initial response when they said Cardinal Bergoglio was sort of, who's that? Pope Francis was born in Argentina and studied theology as well as philosophy. He speaks Spanish, Italian, and German and has lived a humble life with small living quarters and using public transportation or walking whenever possible. Pope Francis is the first non-European to be elected and Catholics everywhere are looking forward to see how he leads the church, including those who sit right here. It's just a, an exciting time whenever we welcome someone to you know, a new position of leadership. I was really overjoyed. But not everyone is excited about the new pope and his policies. This CNN article asks about a dirty war Francis was involved in. This Huffington Post article reported on his anti-gay beliefs. And this NBC News article reports on a research poll that 46% of Catholics want the church to move in new directions. I think every time you get a new pope, uh, um, there's some hope from these contingents of Catholics that maybe something will change on those fronts. And then they are uh, always disappointed <laughs> and frustrated to find out after they do a little bit of homework that the new pope, you know, is going to preserve and protect the same doctrine that the previous pope was protecting. And these things aren't going to change. That's right. Um, so basically everything that people have said and that I've spoken to has had similar um, answers to what Professor Kleiner said that you just saw. Um, and the church isn't going to be moving in any new directions anytime soon. So if there are going to be changes, it's going to be a very subtle and a very slow process. Back to you, Randall. According to the New York Times, most of the Pope Francis' speeches have been simple and focused on the poor and weak. Students are lobbying the Utah State Legislature for an increased financing for a new building on campus, and they're okay to be in construction on another. Lobbyists from the USU made their way down to Salt Lake Capitol for the 2013 legislative session, asking for extra funding for a new building, biology building and hoping to get permission to begin construction on the Aggie Health and Wellness Center. The new biology building is rumored to be built where the animal science building used to stand before it was torn down last summer. But you won't expect to see the new biology building being approved anytime soon. Now the biology building, that's a, a really large appropriation request. Um, usually the legislature likes to hear things that they're going to invest, you know, 40, 50, 60 million dollars into a building um, a couple of times uh, before they start to approve funding for it. Um, there were a couple of other buildings that were at other universities that were in front of it that have been heard in previous legislative sessions. Although the biology building wasn't approved this year, two other university buildings for the uh, Price and Brigham City campuses were. 
as you may know, USU is home to many colleges. And last week, one of them was ranked 24th in the nation on the 2014 list of best education schools. Our Jenna Lynn went to find out why. Along the street is USU's Emma Eccles Jones College of Education. College is being nationally recognized as one of the best. We've been ranked number 24 this year among all of the colleges of education in the country and that's a field of over 1,200. The school was also placed as the fourth best in the nation for research funding, a title given to them for their extensive amount of studies taking place. When you think of the Education College, you might just think of this building, but there's a lot more to it than originally meets the eye. Research for the College of Education is done in multiple buildings all over this campus. We have a very diverse college. Various departments are researching things from aging, memory, and addiction to concussions and athletes and physical rehabilitation. But some of the biggest studies being done are seen in the Early Childhood Education and Research Center. Primarily my interests involve investigating ways to assess children and then to provide them with evidence-based interventions that will help them to improve their abilities to be successful in school. One of these studies involves a series of tasks children do that are meant to record cognitive skills in attention, memory, and perception. These tasks are designed to find patterns and intervention teaching solutions for children with various developmental language problems. A new way they're beginning to do this is by physically looking at people's brain patterns while they complete these tasks. We put these caps on and these caps have optodes that go inside of, uh, of the holes here. By measuring the blood flow moving through the brain, they're able to not only see how well the children complete the tasks, but what is physically happening while they're doing it. With all the research happening in the education college, it's easy to see why students are receiving such a high education. I'm able to test real children and I, I don't just have to read off textbooks and do essays and stuff. Jenna Lynn, ATV News. The Emma Echel Jones College of Education is the only education school in Utah to have ever placed in the top 50. This week, USU President Stan Albrecht canceled the Tier 2 Tuition Public Forum, stating that he is not asking for an increase in the 2013-2014 school year. N not having an increase in the Tier 2 tuition means that USU has decided that raising tuition is not necessary for the upcoming school year. President Albrecht decided this after seeing decisions made in the Utah legislature. It is still possible, however, that the Tier 1 tuition rates, which is determined by the State Board of Regents instead of the university, will be raised. But students can look forward to not having the university increase their tuition costs next year. We have had a Tier 2 increase every year since 2001. So this, it's been a long time since, we've had, uh, since we haven't had a Tier 2 increase. So it's good news for students. The State Board of Regents will decide on the Tier 1 tuition rates by the end of the month. Coming up after the news, we told you a few months back about some landowners who were worried they might lose their lots to the city. We'll tell you how it all played out. And students say a final goodbye to one of USU professors. iPad by filling out the library online survey and it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.
last November, we told you about some people from Cache Valley who were complaining about the Logan Canal project. Those complaints turned into a lawsuit against the city and other companies and went to court in January. ATV's Brandon Fonda has updates on the lawsuit that could be tearing through your yard. Work still continues on the Logan Canal project even after landowners near the canal filed for a lawsuit seeking to stop the project until titles and permits were acquired by the city. Both sides argued their case in 1st District Court in January, but Judge Kevin K. Allen needed more time to make a decision. It's been almost two months since the case was heard in court, and residents are still waiting for a decision. But in the meantime, machines like these will still continue to run. Most often, if it's a complicated case, they'll take it under advisement. In the uh, rules in the state of Utah for a state court judge, that judge has 60 days in which to issue a written decision on that issue. And because of the lengthy process, it gets harder for residents to continue fighting. Of course, that you're always frustrated is because of the slowness of the process, because when you get it to this point, it, it does get harder and harder to stop because people lose faith that there's any chance of stopping it. And that's what I'm saying is who wants to put money into it now because it's a done, you know, it looks like a done deal to everybody. Logan City and Canal Affiliates would not comment on the litigation process, but it seems as though they have no plan of slowing down. Project manager Zan Murray told us that the project is 70% complete and is planned to be operational in the first week of May. Brandon Fonda, ATV News. A second hearing for the case has not yet been scheduled. Students and faculty are still mourning over the death of Professor Alan Hashimoto, but took some time to celebrate his life on Wednesday. People filed into the performance hall on the rainy afternoon to remember the graphics design professor who died in his office of a heart attack in February. After opening remarks from Kane College Dean Craig Jessup, a band played one of Hashimoto's favorite songs. and a video memorial was shown, President Albrecht said, USU has lost one of its best. There is simply no way that this energetic, brilliant, and fatigue of faculty member can ever be replaced. So on behalf of all of us, I express my sincere condolences to Alan's family and friends. We have truly lost one of our best, and we miss him greatly. Dean Jessup said the Kane College will do whatever it can to support the Hashimoto's family. If you're a college senior, you might be a little stressed making your graduation plans for spring. The USU Bookstore hosted a fair to make preparing for your big day a little easier. everything you need to graduate from college, but do you know everything you need for graduation day? Well, I knew like I needed the cap and gown and tassel, there's a lot of other stuff. The USU Bookstore's grad fair this week is helping students get ready for graduation. For the grad fair we've set up this table and we're the ones where they start and where they can come and get their cap and gown and they go through the order. So this is the cap that they wear and then they can hang their tassel. It depends on like if they want to have their college tassel on or the USU tassel and they can choose which drop down date they want. This is the gown for the bachelors. It's longer and it's less ornate than the other two. And then this is just the stole of gratitude. Along with the clothes, students can also get rings, announcements and frames for their future diplomas. They have it really set up quite easy where you can just go to the different stations. They're really located close to each other. Just made it really easy, quick, fast. Like everybody's really helpful. They could tell me exactly what I needed. It was just pretty easy and simple. They made it very simple to get the cap and gown. I like how they have them already here so I can just hurry and pick it up and I'm ready to go. With the bookstore's grad fair and one-stop shopping, it makes your graduation easy and something to celebrate. It's a great feeling, but at the same time, kind of like, ooh, what's going to happen next? Seniors can focus less on the tassel and more on their future after graduation. Tamara Bradley, ATV News. Though the college grad fair is over, graduating seniors can still pick up their packages at the bookstore until graduation day, May 4th. Hey, we've got... Tori. Tori here today. <laughs> So what can you tell us? Yeah. Well, I think most of the snow that you saw this morning has melted away. So let's just take a look at the current temperature. As you can see, it's 37 degrees and it is partly sunny out there. 
Hopefully it warms up. I'll have more for you after the break. Two outs with a runner on first base. Now the big guy comes up with that, hitting 342 with 92 RBI. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. iPad by filling out the library online survey and it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. Ryan was down 10 to 6 in his match uh, in that tiebreaker, the overtime game. Um, he called. So, Tori, yeah. Snow, when is it going away? We really want to know. I would like to know too. I'll tell you more. Let's take a look at our current, our temperatures across the country. This is outside. As you can see, there's still a little snow in the mountains. Here's our temperatures across the country. As you can see in our part of the country, it is dark purple, which means cold. It indicates temperatures that are in the 30s. I would like to show you a map of sometime in the future where it gets warmer, but they wouldn't look any different from this one. In fact, it may get colder before it gets warmer. Here's a little piece of trivia for you. How is the temperature today compared to the temperature a year ago? Well, it's, temp it's currently 37 degrees, and if you can recall, last year was an unusually warm year. So what's the answer? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute. First, let's take a look at the precipitation. Now, the snow this morning may have you curious about it, and this map will show us what the chances are of more coming our way. This light green here on our area shows us that there's less than a half inch of precipitation, the chance, so don't be too worried. This next map is similar. This is the probability of precipitation. It's measured in percentage. So this one shows us that we have an 80 to 90% chance of getting that half inch of snow. It's no surprise that we have snow outside, but let's take a look at how much the rest of the country has. Up here in northern Idaho and Montana, they've got two to three inches, which is more than any other mainland state. There's a fair amount here and here, but otherwise, we are one of the few. Let's move on to our air quality because that is kind of a happy topic today because it's looking good. The darker the color, the better. And ours is looking about average, maybe a little better. Hopefully, it can improve as the winter goes away. So, the answer to my question earlier is this. Last year, the high temperature in Logan was 62 degrees, more than 20 degrees warmer. The average for March is 46.8 degrees high and a low of 27.6. Our five-day forecast is up next, looking pretty bland in my opinion. Our numbers don't fluctuate much at all. The biggest chance change happens starting Sunday, where it warms up just a bit, finally reaching the 40s. Considering cloud coverage, it will be partly sunny or mostly cloudy all week until Monday. But don't get too upset because this will likely be the last cold week. So cross your fingers and hope for the best. 
So what you're saying is the smell's not going away? Anything not, else? well, not in the next couple days, but it will go away. But the cold weather is what's not going to go away. Cold weather Anytime not soon. Go away. So, at least in the next week. Why don't you tell me what the coldest day on history was so that I won't feel better about what it is right now? I'd have to look that up, but probably pretty cold. So you can feel better about today. I'll look it up and I'll tell you. Coming up on sports, um, USU students have taken handball to a new level. We'll tell you more after the break. the iPad by filling out the library online survey and it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. The Copy Center on the first floor of the TSC is open Monday through Friday 7 to 6 for all your document needs. Let the trained staff help you print important documents. Services include binding, color copies, custom gifts from your favorite photos, and last minute items like pencils, report covers, and especially Scantrons. The Copy Center. We're here to help. Welcome back. I'm Lee Kubik, and I'm here to bring you your ATV Sports. Aggie football had their most successful season in school history in 2012. 11 wins, a bowl championship, and a top 25 finish. Now there's a new coach, new conference. Does that lead to the same success? With the start of spring practice Tuesday, the team prepares to answer these questions. Coach Jeff Richards has watched his gymnast consistently hit. You know the old, the old saying, practice makes perfect? Our Meredith Kitty shows you the steps Aggie Gymnastics is taking to succeed at WAC Championships. Coach Jeff Richards has watched his gymnast consistently hit routines on vault and bars, but stuck landings and big air can't make up for the falls on beam and floor. We've got uh, six of our 12 kids, you know, that are scholarship right now sitting out. So we're, you know, we're, we're pretty happy that we've got the depth that we've got this year. But you can see there's the inconsistency. It's that inconsistency that has Richards worried. I was really upset with their performance tonight. It just didn't show what they've been doing in practice. Uh, we're, we're still trying to figure it out. With WAC championships coming up, the gymnasts are running more and more routines in the gym. But so far, all around her Sarah Landis says it hasn't translated into competitions. I don't know what it is. We've been doing a lot of work in the gym. We've been changing our workouts, trying to get some more numbers in. Um, so we just come to meets and we need to learn to be able to pull it together and have everybody hit at one time. The Aggies have recorded fall after fall on beam. Even Paige Jones, one of the Aggies' most consistent gymnasts, has had her share of falls. The slips on the four inch wide beam make sense, but even on flat ground, the Aggies have struggled. Destiny Azell, Caitlin Betts, and Jones have all recorded falls in meets. Three gymnasts that the Aggies need to hit on a regular basis. The Aggies show glimmers of improvement, a tumbling pass here, a stuck dismount here. Freshman beam worker Stephanie Daly has recorded solid scores, including a season high among all Aggies, 9.875 against Air Force. The Aggies have two weeks to make adjustments with just one competition in that time. It's a quick turnaround to make tweaks before WAC championships. Meredith Kinney, ATV News. We will update you on how they perform at the championships on next Tuesday's show. Not many students have been national sports champions, but two students here at USU have become just that. Jonathan Larson and Ryan Campbell have been working towards, his, working towards this goal for the last two and a half years, conditioning six days a week and putting in any extra time they have. The tournament brought in teams from schools all over the world. Campbell first won the singles national championship before going on with Larson to win the doubles against the University of Limerick. They said they were nervous but supported each other through it all and that their friendship on and off the court played a big role in this win. When Ryan was down 10 to six in his match uh, in that tiebreaker, the overtime game, 
Uh, he called a timeout and he came out and I remember just saying to him, Ryan, if you really want to win this thing, prove it to me right now. And that's when he went in, he side out the, the server and he went and rattled off his five points to, to win his championship, his singles match. And when I ran in and, and gave him his hug, I was like, that's how you prove it to me. Now let's go get another one. While the title of national champion is nice, neither Larson or Campbell plan to quit anytime soon. They are now preparing for another tournament in Salt Lake City coming up next month. You're now up to date on your Aggie TV Sports. Don't forget to check out your NCAA tournament brackets. Last time I checked, mine was still perfect. Lauren and Randall, back to you. Still coming up on ATV News. We'll show you how a couple of students got a once in a lifetime chance to hang out with a national athlete. the iPad by filling out the library online survey and it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. If you Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. It's not often you get an opportunity to hang out with a world-class athlete. And that dream came true last weekend when <clears throat> Bill gave some select a student the opportunity to see how Aggie life and the, real, uh, the world of Red Bull go hand in hand. Clint Clausen is well known throughout the world of action sports. He's a Hawaii native who now lives in Ogden, Utah. Clausen was nine when he tried skydiving for the first time and since then he's logged over 16,000 skydives. Last week he teamed up with Utah State to give a group of students a look into his daily life. The students were well known faces around USU. Charlie Riddle, the face of the USU student group, The Herd, and Doug Fiafia, the newly elected student body president. The group had different levels of experience, but none had ever jumped with an athlete like Clausen. Jumping out of a plane? Yes. So you've done this before? One time, yeah. So you're a seasoned pro by now, right? Yep. So I'm expecting I'm not big even things. going tandem. The plane took off from Ogden, and within minutes, the team was jumping out over the state of Utah. Clausen added a few tricks to his jump, but for the others, just getting out of the plane was a success. Seven <laughs> minutes later, they were on the ground Woo! safely. Hey, man, how was it? That was awesome. Awesome? Ah, oh, damn, that was awesome. That's what I'm talking about. What was the best part? Well, besides landing safely and surviving, <laughs> but I got to jump with a Red Bull athlete. That was... We opened up and just held each other up there. That was pretty that rad. Sounds, that's Meredith Kinney, ATV News. So, I think it would be kind of cool to do that, but I'd be scared. What about you, Lee? Terrified. I think it would be an awesome thing to do. I agree with you, Randall. I think that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It'd be really neat. Well, have a great day, Aggies. Thanks for joining us.